Okay, so this is the section on elementary matrices. Let's start off with the definition. Okay, so a matrix, which we'll call E, is called an elementary matrix if it is only one operation from the identity matrix. So let's look at an example and then we'll go through all of them. So the idea is you start from I, you start from the identity, you do an elementary row operation, and then that will be your elementary matrix. So for example, start with I, and let's just do one row operation. Let's do three row one. Now let's do, let's do three row two to row two. That's an elementary operation as we learned in the other video. And we know we get that. And that is our elementary matrix. Let's do another one. So we're just changing row two and we'll take two row one, add it to row two. And that is another elementary matrix. This is a elementary row operation, hence elementary matrix. So the effect of an elementary matrix is, is to perform an elementary row operation on A when you multiply it with A. We'll show this effect after we find our elementary matrices. When you exchange rows, it's called a permutation. So let's look at an example. Let's exchange row 1 and 2. And this is called permutation, exchanging row one and two. So again, instead of showing this, the effect of this permutation matrix, it will perform that operation when you multiply it with a matrix A. So let's multiply it with a general A. When we multiply these, three by three, three by three, we'll get a three by three. We expect it to change rows, but again, this is where you can get practice multiplying. This times this will get D in the first spot. This, this times this will get E in the next spot. And there you have it. The two rows were exchanged, rows one and two. I'd like to find the inverse. Well, think about it. If I exchange rows once, and then I exchange them back, you're gonna get the same matrix back. So if we do it twice, the inverse is itself. Make sure you check these. This times this, of course we get the one. In the middle, this times that. We get the one in the middle, and so forth. So you see here we have the identity, which means these are inverses of each other. Hence, that's true. And we call this M for multiple, row three by K. So this is our elementary matrix. And let's check it, the result of it. You can multiply these two, and you'll see, get A there, B, C in the first row. Second row, D, E, F. Third row, K, G, K, H, and K, I. So it multiplies the third row. You can see this multiplies the third row by K. Our inverse, let's try it. So I claim that when you multiply K times one over K, I'll get our identity matrix back. Multiply these two. This last times that last is K times one over K, which is one. So yes, that is 
they are inverses. And vice versa, you could switch it around and see you'll get the same thing. And this is adding two rows. Remember from the last section, adding two rows, you could add a multiple of one row to another and add it to that row. And also, I want to really point out, it has to be plus 1R2 to row 2. Okay, it can't be minus R2 to row 2. It has to be plus in order to be an elementary, elementary matrix. And this is adding 1 to the multiple of K1. So we're going to check this. Row 1 stays the same. You can see 1 times this is A, and then B, and then C. Row 2 is K, it's this row, times that is KA plus D. This times this is KB plus E. And coming back to our bottom one, GHI. What about the inverse? Additive inverse with the multiple one, it's a multiple inverse. Let's check it. So again, k and minus k, the additive inverses, because they're in the additive spot. So let's try multiplying this to see if it works. This times this. So the two zeros, we zero those out. It's still one. This times this, zero. This row times that. Looks like it's k plus minus k, which is zero. That's what we were wanting. One. And no surprises on the last row. So yeah, these are inverses. So everything that I just showed you, we left multiplied. And that was to help us exchange rows, which is mostly what we work at in this class. Not always. Well, we would write multiply. You can try it on your own. So if we were flip, to flip these two and write multiply, you can see it would do that operation to the column, not the row. So we have the theorem, every elementary matrix is invertible and its inverse is invertible. Well, I don't really need to prove it because I just showed you every single elementary matrix and we found the inverse to every single type. So that's true. This is going to be important for the next video when I continue on the topic of elementary matrices. So stay tuned and watch that one next. Thanks.